In Disney's version of The Little Mermaid, Ariel falls in love with a prince named Eric. She is able to win his heart and the movie ends on a happy note with the two kissing on their wedding day as the screen fades to black. But in the original fable, things don't go as smoothly for young Ariel. In the original version of the story, the sea witch doesn't just take Ariel's singing voice, but instead cuts out her tongue. In this version, Ariel is not in love with the prince, but is instead only interested in being with him so she can become human. She fears death, because in this world mermaids do not have human souls. Later in the story, as Ariel is trying to make her last attempt at winning Eric's heart, she sees him holding another woman, and recognizes how foolish she was to think she could ever be with him. While at her lowest point in the story, the sea witch returns and offers her a knife to cut out the prince's heart. But instead, she returns to the sea, where she dies and slowly melts away soulless. Be sure to follow for more of the true dark side of TikTok. It's time for some morbid Disney. Death surrounds the Haunted Mansion. And I'm not just talking about cast member ghost stories. Now, we all know that ash is getting dumped there is a constant problem, but did you know there are some real people from the mansion's history that had some crazy deaths? Take Yale Gracie, for instance. He was a legendary Imagineer, but you might know him better as this. Back in 1983, he was shot and killed while relaxing on his vacation, and his murder has still not been solved to this day. Then there's Paul Fries. You might know him better as the ghost host. He actually died by overdose on pain medication in 1986, and it was later ruled as a suicide. Yeah, when the ghost host says there's always his way in the stretching room, unfortunately there's some sad truth to that. The Haunted Mansion, its history is complicated, and unfortunately dark. Like a follow if you like Disney. Has anybody ever told you the terrifying true story of Snow White? I'm sure by now we all know the Disney version, but the Brothers Grimm version, which came before the Disney version, is actually much darker. In this version, the evil queen orders the huntsman to take Snow White into the woods, kill her, and bring back her liver and lungs for the queen to eat. Which is obviously very disturbing, but there's actually more to the story. Later in the story, the prince and Snow White are getting married, and they invite all the royalty in the land. The evil queen queen shows up, unknowing it was her stepdaughter's wedding. When she arrives, she's forced to step into burning hot iron shoes brought from the fireplace, and then she has to dance until she dies, and that's her punishment for trying to go after Snow White. I don't really feel bad for her, but gosh, I mean, this version is terrifying. Dark Disney Theories Too Real to Ignore, Part 2. For this one, let's take a look at Monsters, Inc. Theory goes that Sully is now dead. So in Monsters, Inc., Randall always mentions how bad humans are. At one point, he says that humans skin monsters and make toilet seat covers out of their fur. Sadly, this foreshadowed the fate of our friend Sully. In a Toy Story short, there's a scene where a kid is taking a bubble bath, and lo and behold, on the toilet seat in the bathroom is a fuzzy Sully seat cover. So Randall was right. Humans do skin the monsters and turn them into toilet seat covers. Poor Sully. Like and follow for more videos like this. The origin of Rapunzel is actually a roller coaster. So our story starts with a pregnant mother who has cravings for a certain herb which can only be found in the witch's garden. She is caught by the witch and the witch demands her firstborn baby, which is Rapunzel. Rapunzel is then locked away for years, and the only human contact she has is with her mother. So then, the prince pretends to be the witch and sneaks up the tower. And let's just say him and Rapunzel do the dirty. And every night he comes back to do the dirty with her. But remember, Rapunzel hasn't learned anything about the outside world, so she doesn't know that intercourse can lead to pregnancy. She realizes months later that she's pregnant because her clothes don't fit her anymore. The witch then sends Rapunzel to a desert, cuts off her hair, and tells her to give birth. And remember, Rapunzel doesn't know what the fuck giving birth is. The witch goes back with Rapunzel's hair, and as the prince tries to climb up again, he falls and goes blind because his face landed on thorns. But Rapunzel finds him, cries, and fixes his face. Have you ever heard the real backstory of Cinderella? The story was written back in 1812, and it starts with the death of her mother and her father remarrying an evil woman, the same as today's story. However, the fairy godmother in the original story is actually just a magical wishing tree growing over her mother's grave. The 1812 Cinderella was a lot more of a go-getter than today's Cinderella as well. 
She goes to the tree and asks it for a dress that she can wear to the ball, and the tree dresses her in the most beautiful, prince eye-catching dress. She ends up going to the ball three nights in a row, and each time in a dress more spectacular than the last. On the third night when she leaves, she realizes that the sneaky prince has coated the exit in tar, so she leaves her golden slipper behind. In an effort to find Cinderella, the prince tries her slipper on her stepsisters. When it doesn't fit, they cut parts of their feet off to make it fit. But of course the shoe fits good old Cindy. And the last difference is that at Cinderella and the Prince's wedding, her stepsisters get their eyes picked out by doves. Dark things Disney doesn't want you to know, part 20. Today let's talk about the tragic death of Devin Staples. Devin Staples was a 22-year-old employee at Disney. He was best known for dressing up as Gaston, but he also played a variety of other characters. Sadly, on July 4th, 2015, Devin lost his life. On this night, while celebrating the 4th of July, he took a firework and placed it on his head. The firework got caught on fire and exploded, taking Devin's life instantly. Devin's brother was the first one to arrive on scene, and when he did, he said that there was no Devin left. That is a very traumatic thing to see. You're probably wondering how the firework got set off in the first place. According to people around him, he was teasing that he was going to light it and didn't actually mean to, so it went off accidentally. Then you got the media that's saying that he wanted to take his own life, but Devin's family and friends don't think this is the case. Either way, Disney does not want anyone to know that one of their workers died in such a tragic way. Follow me on YouTube for more content like this. Link in bio. And now it's time to ruin your childhood. This is the real story of Sleeping Beauty. Brace yourself, this one gets pretty graphic. Sleeping Beauty is a princess named Talia who pricked her finger and fell into a deep coma. She lay in an abandoned castle where a king came by one day. He finds Talia sleeping there and he sexually assaults her in her sleep. He leaves not realizing he got her pregnant. Nine months go by and she gives birth to twins while still asleep. When the twins are born, two fairies come by and try to take care of them by getting them to breastfeed from their mother. One of the babies misses the nipple and sucks on her finger instead, pulling out the poison splinter, causing her to wake up! The king returns to try to go for round two, and he finds that she's awake, and she falls in love with him! By the way, he's married. His wife, who Maleficent is based off of, finds out about the whole thing and tries to feed him his own kids. But she didn't know that the cook actually set the kids free and he used a lamb instead. Then, she finds Sleeping Beauty and tries to burn her alive! The king barges in on this, sees what's going on, and demands the guards push his wife into the fire instead! Having done nothing wrong, the queen got burned alive! And Sleeping Beauty wound up happily ever after with her rapist baby daddy. So this is the true story about Pinocchio, if you're easily scared don't watch this. So in the Disney version, he's a boy that goes along on his adventures with his little friend and then finally at the end of the movie he becomes a boy like he's always dreamt of. But in the true story, he's actually a mischievous boy who causes harm to everyone, he ends up killing his little friend, he's tortured throughout the whole story and then is finally hung right at the end. Here's the dark truth behind the Lion King. So you remember this scene where Mufasa dies, right? Simba later finds his dead body, but they never actually show what happened to his body. You may think that the hyenas would eat it, but hyenas actually don't touch lions. And according to Google, there's no other animals that eat lions. That is, except other lions. And then in this scene, Scar is seen playing around with the animal skull, and it looks exactly like a lion skull. So does this mean that Scar ate his own dead brother's body? And now it's time to ruin your childhood. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with all 64 Colors of the Wind from Disney's Pocahontas. Brace yourself, this one's a rough one. Pocahontas' birth name was Matoica. Her mother's name was Pocahontas. She died giving birth to her. Her father's name was Wahan Seneca, not Powhatan. That was the name of the tribe. Wahan Seneca was so devastated by his wife's death that he renamed his daughter Pocahontas. She was raised by her aunts and other women of the Mataponi tribe in Werewokomoko. Now let's talk about John Smith. When they first met, John Smith was 27, Pocahontas was 9. Might I also add, they were never romantically involved. John Smith was actually kind of a dick. He'd frequently hold the tribe at gunpoint and threaten them for supplies and food. Fast forward a bit. Pocahontas later got married to Kokuum. You remember, the guy John Smith's buddy killed? He was murdered and she was taken by the English to prevent any further conflicts between them and the natives. She had to leave her baby with Kokuum's tribe, she was sexually assaulted by her captors and became pregnant with her second child, and later married John Rolfe, who brought tobacco to America. Thus creating a new alliance between the English and the Native Americans. Yay! There are a lot of dark urban legends regarding Disneyland. Some are true. Let me tell you one. This is Debbie Stone. In 1974, Debbie was an employee at Disneyland. She was crushed to death between two moving walls at an attraction called America Sings. People have claimed her spirit never left Disneyland. Would you like to hear more creepy stories of Disneyland? I'd be glad to tell you. Dark things Disney doesn't want you to know? 
part 13. Today, let's talk about the tragic death of Javier Cruz. Javier Cruz started working at Disney in 1995. Eventually, he became a character actor at Disney and would play the role of Pluto. Sadly, in February of 2004, Cruz lost his life while in costume as Pluto. This happened during the Dreams Come True parade at Magic Kingdom. He was in costume ready to enter the parade when his foot got caught on a float. It was a three-part float and his foot got caught between the second and third sections of the float. When the float began to move, his body got twisted around and he fell. He was then struck and killed by the third section of the float. It was so bad that they had to use a forklift and hydraulic lift to get the vehicle off of him. Now this all happened in the backstage area of the parade, so thankfully no visitors saw. It was such a tragic incident and Disney was actually fined for this. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration came for Disney saying that they didn't have enough safety protocols. If you like videos like this, make sure to check out my YouTube channel, link in bio. And now it's time to ruin your childhood. So many of you are familiar with the classic Disney movie, Peter Pan, which is a movie we've all come to know and love over the years. However, the original story of Peter Pan is nothing like the movie, and it's actually very dark. So much like the cartoon movie, the book Peter Pan is about a boy in Neverland named Peter Pan who never grows up. But also, Peter Pan is the only person in Neverland who never ages. And you're all familiar with the group of friends Peter Pan hangs out with known as the Lost Boys. However, much like in real life, eventually all boys become men. And Peter did not like this. So what did he do? When they came of age, he killed them. Here's where it gets more tricky. The group of pirates who roam the seas of Neverland led by a said Captain Hook is rumored to be former Lost Boys who escaped from Peter Pan before he could kill them. Which really begs the question. In the story of Peter Pan, who's really the bad guy here? Willy Wonka is not really the person who you think he is, and here is the shocking truth. Growing up, a lot of children loved Willy Wonka and they watched his movies. But what if I told you that he actually has a very creepy backstory that you probably don't want to hear? So if you don't want to hear the rest of this, exit out now because it's going to be too late. Anyways, a lot of people know Willy Wonka for giving chocolate and candy to people. But when he was a little kid, Willy Wonka had very severe problems. His parents would always make Willy cry and they would frequently take him to the dentist just to make sure that he didn't eat any candy. Because of this, Willy had a very traumatic childhood and he decided to take out his revenge on everyone else. That's when Willy started going around in his van giving out free candy to people. But inside of the candy, he would stuff various chemicals in order to make people sick. But then one day the craziest thing happened. Follow for part two. 